All right, so season one of Cobra Kai, which actually did not start off on Netflix. It started off on what I believe used to be called YouTube Red, which is basically YouTube subscription service, which is now YouTube Premium, where they don't do as much original content anymore. So it's mainly just YouTube Premium at this point is just no ads on your videos. But yeah, they don't really do a whole lot of original content like they did back in 2018 which is when this show came out. And I believe the first two seasons started off on YouTube Red and then it got picked up by Netflix in like 2020, I believe. That's at least when season three came out, I believe. Um, it was either that or 2021. I think it might be 2021 actually. But uh, yeah, I do love this show. It is the spinoff of the original Karate Kid series. No, not the one with Jaden Smith. However, the show is produced or at least like executive produced by Will Smith, which... Uh, actually explains a lot now looking back on it but um yeah it's created for television created by uh josh held hopefully i'm saying that right hayden schlossenberg and john Hurwitz. definitely want to interview one of those dudes eventually and talk about cobra kai because i love this show i love the original karate kid series uh the original trilogy i should say um i mean i do like the first one more than the second and third obviously more than the the Jaden Smith one, and I didn't see the one with uh, Hillary Swank, but I probably got to watch that at some point just to say that I've seen it. Um, I'm really wondering if they're going to bring her character in, but that's a topic for another day. As for right now, we are talking about season one, which, as I said, started off on YouTube Red. I don't think it got as, I mean, I think it got good traction being on YouTube, but obviously nothing compared to what it is now on Netflix. And uh, the first two seasons are crazy, for sure. If you're a diehard, like, Karate Kid fan, these first two seasons you're absolutely going to love. And uh, going forward, you may or may not like it. That's just kind of how I see it, because at times this show very much becomes a soap opera. So, I, so, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, is that how I talk now? Uh, it's very much a soap opera. So much, in fact, that the character Samantha, played by Mary Mauser literally has a line in this first season where she's like, I know, it sounds like a soap opera. And the dude's like, oh, no, not at all. I can relate. And I'm just like, yeah, it sounds exactly like a soap opera because that's what this show is at times, at least with the, the kid characters. And a little bit with Ralph Macchio and William Zopka, which, by the way, Ralph Macchio returning as Daniel LaRusso and William Zopka returning as Johnny Lawrence from the original film. Uh, as for Daniel LaRusso original films... Um, and I love seeing these two. We get moments of them fighting, moments of them bonding. You see that they're really not as different as they really thought. And I love those moments of, you know, uh, of Johnny, he grew up very rich. Daniel grew up very poor. However, Daniel didn't have a dad and Johnny had a dad, but it was a stepdad and he was a piece of shit. So... I don't know, there's different things they can relate to, and also, you know, they found kind of a father figure in a karate mentor, uh, a sensei, so similar paths there for sure, they each had to deal with their own triumphs, and I mean, you, in this movie, or not movie, in this show, like, you feel a lot more for uh, Johnny's character, you actually care about him, even though he starts off as just being a really terrible dude, like, just the most bummy person you've ever seen uh you know waking up in the morning drinking a, a beer that's just been sitting there all night spitting it out and he's like eh fuck it and he just chugs the thing he's a drunk he drives drunk he uh he's definitely not very pc um let me see here there's there's a line in this show where uh he's like we are you one of those challenge kids and he's like well the doctor said i might be on the spectrum He's like, well, I don't know what that is, but get off of it pronto. And I'm just like, oh, God. And then and then um, Miguel's character, played by Sholo Maradona, um, who's going to be playing Blue Beetle for DC soon. Hopefully that movie doesn't get canceled like Batgirl. But, um, you know, he's talking about uh, genderization and stuff like that. And Johnny has no idea what he's talking about. I mean, this is coming from the guy who has no idea what Facebook is up until a certain point in this first season. So he's very much a dude stuck in the 80s. And you can tell he's the kind of guy that very much peaked in high school. Um, I haven't even looked at my notes yet, which I do have a lot of. But, I mean, I've watched this first season so many times, it almost feels like I don't even need it. This, I don't know, I can't remember for sure. Out of all the seasons, 
Is this my favorite? Possibly, I don't know, but I'm going to have to rewatch those other seasons to see how I completely feel. It might even do a, a ranking for all the seasons and see which one I like the best and which one I like the worst. Um, so far, with all the seasons that I've watched, I don't think I've disliked the single season. Just dislike certain things that they do. I mean, there's things in here where it's just like, if these characters talked it out, they'd see they're not different and, and that... Uh, you know, most of the stuff that happens in the show is a misunderstanding until you get into the crazy aspects of bringing in Terry Silver and uh, and John Kreese, which they don't do in this season, really. Um, spoiler alert, end of the season, John Kreese comes in. I mean, it's been out since 2018. I know that's not that long, but most people at this point have watched it and kind of know the deal and they've seen trailers and whatnot. They've seen John Kreese, so uh, and they might not know who he is. Which, if you don't, definitely go rewatch, or not rewatch, but go and watch the original Karate Kid at least. Because since Cobra Kai is one of my favorite shows, that must mean that the original Karate Kid is one of my favorite movies. Is that true? Absolutely. freaking lutely Probably at least in my top 10, if not my top 5 favorite movies of all time. Even though I wasn't born in the 80s, it gives me a lot of nostalgia. And it's something I didn't really watch as a kid. I think the first Karate Kid movie I watched was the Jaden Smith one. I could be wrong, I might have seen bits and pieces of the original as a kid, but something about that movie just always gets me pumped. I love the characters, and I just, ugh. And then this show just honestly makes it even better, just knowing where they go in their lives, and just seeing how it all comes together, and I really appreciate that, because uh, a lot of this is fan service, especially in this first season. There's a lot of callbacks and little Easter eggs. A lot of them are on the nose, but most of them work for me, just because... <laughs> I love Karate Kid, so like, you know, when Sam and, and Miguel go to golf and stuff, um, you know, they're playing the Young Hearts Be Fast, and that's exactly the same song that was playing when Daniel went on the date with Allie at the same place, and then you get like, uh, oh, let me see if I wrote anything down here in terms of like some of the specific, uh, I don't think I wrote any specific like little Easter eggs down, but there's there's definitely a lot of callbacks and stuff to the original. And sorry if you see me doing that. I'm not wiping my nose. It's just really itchy right now for some reason. Um, but so many, so many callbacks to the first season. Oh, yeah, one that I can think of right now. Miguel's like washing windows or whatever at Cobra Kai. And he's like talking to Johnny. He's like, is there any particular way you want me to do this? And he's like, ah, no, I don't give a shit. Just do it. Do whatever's easiest. And that's a callback to Mr. Miyagi doing the whole, you know, wax on, wax off there. He's like, any particular way you want me to clean this? He's like, nah, I don't give a shit. Just seeing how different his tactics from not only Daniel's tactics, but Mr. Miyagi's tactics and, you know, his own sensei's tactics as well. Just to see how he teaches and, and his style. I like it. Um, and then we get to see a little bit of Daniel doing some karate in here, too. And you get to see those classic tactics of him, like, you know, doing the wax on, wax off, the windows, like, instead of the painting the fence, it's windows. Um, so, like, you, you see him training people with that method that Mr. Miyagi used, but kind of in his own way as well. And that's the kind of stuff I really like, too. I'm not going to get into too specifics on who he's training or anything like that in case you haven't seen this first season because I highly recommend people go check this out. I even spoiled too much with the whole John Kreese thing because, spoiler alert, but he's supposed to be dead in this first season. But, you know, he's a supervillain, let's be honest. John Kreese was always a supervillain, especially in that third Karate Kid movie when they brought in Terry Silver. And that's when the the movies kind of got cartoony and that's what they're kind of doing with the fifth season kind of did it with the fourth season so it has me a little bit worried that the show is getting overly cartoony and overly so soap opera y i know that's not a word but um i i do have my reservations and my my i wouldn't necessarily say fears but my uh you know what i mean i have my my things that make me nervous going into this fifth season because they still have plans for maybe like three, four more seasons. And I'm just like, how far are you going to go with this? Because at a certain point, things are just going to get overly cartoony and I'm, I'm really worried about it, but Hey, I will have faith in the creators and the writers and all that kind of stuff. And just hope that they do something good. I'm sure they will. 
Uh, but let me talk about some other cast members in here. We have Ralph Macchio, obviously, as I said before, as Daniel Russo, and he's in a different kind of situation now. In the first movie, you know, he was the underdog, he was poor and all that. Now, he's pretty rich. He's balling. He it lives in a nice house, has a beautiful wife, played by, uh, uh, let me see, where's her name? I thought I had it on here. Bear with me. I guess I don't. Shoot. I really thought I had her on here, but I guess I don't. Um, did I write it down on here? Nope, I don't think so. Bear with me. I like to credit people. Uh, I think it might be in this notebook as I drop all my paper here. Um, yes, I do. Courtney Hengeller. Hopefully I'm saying that right. As Amanda LaRusso. Um... Yeah, she's she's beautiful for sure. Lucky to have a wife like that. Um, and she, I mean, we don't see a whole lot of it in this season, but she is a certified badass. I mean, I, I love her character. I think she's great. She kind of keeps uh, uh, Daniel and Johnny kind of on the straightened path and makes sure they don't butt heads too much. And whenever they start to, she's just like, are you two going to fucking grow up and stop acting like, you know children like in high school like you did literally in the first movie are you gonna stop doing that now um yeah i mean she she's kind of the voice of reason so i really like her there uh we have sholo maraduina maraduina trying not to butcher names here uh as miguel diaz as i said before and he is the first student in the new cobra kai run by johnny lawrence and i really like his character a lot of parallels with his character and Daniel's character, actually. Um, in fact, the place that he lives is a lot like Daniel's old place that he lived in in the first Karate Kid film, and that's also where Johnny lives as well. And that's how he meets uh, that's how he meets Miguel. So kind of funny to see, you know, uh, uh, maybe not funny but ironic to see Johnny go from a rich house to a poor house, a lot like Daniel's house in the first movie, and then Daniel to go from a poor house to a rich house. Um, so yeah, you just kind of the parallels there, I can appreciate that. Uh, we have Tanner Buchanan as Robbie Keane. I'm not going to talk too much about his character here. Um, I might talk about it more when I talk about the other seasons because he is a pretty big character. Um, but yeah, I'm not going to say too much about it here because I want you guys, in case you haven't seen it, to uh, kind of find out who he is for yourself. But we have Mary Mauser, as I said before, as Samantha LaRusso, the daughter to Daniel LaRusso, obviously. Uh, we have Griffin Santo Santa Pedro, hopefully I'm saying that right, as Anthony LaRusso, which he doesn't really have a huge part in this first season, but he kind of does going forward. Mainly in season four is when they really start to focus on his character a little bit more, but, um, gotta have all the, can't talk, LaRusso's there, uh, who else do we have in here, um, we got Jacob Bertrand as Eli Moskowitz slash Hawk, uh, he's a character you kind of love to hate in seasons going forward, but any character in here that you hate at any point usually has some sort of an arc, to make you like them again. So kind of go back and forth on his character. We also have Gianni DeCenzo as Dimitri Alexopoulos. Probably saying that wrong. Um, he's kind of an annoying character in this first season. He becomes a little bit better over the few coming seasons. But a little annoying here. A little bit of a perv. Not going to lie. Uh, but he has some funny moments here and there. So. Uh, let me see here. Nicole Brown as Aisha Robinson. Very great character. Um, I think her character left the show, or like the actress left the show after season two, maybe three, and then kind of had a little cameo in season four, um, which I hope they bring her back. She's a really great character in this season and the next season. You know, with these Cobra Kai kids, she, she is the second student to Cobra Kai. And with some of them, like, they're, you can see they're good kids. They just had really bad shit that they had to deal with at school in terms of, like, bullying and stuff and just some of their backgrounds. And you root for them, at, but at the same time, they do some things that are just so brutal where you're just like, that's not how you should have held that. But, you know, your mind is kind of being poisoned by this alpha, 
alpha male sensei right now. <laughs> I mean, the way Johnny Lawrence is right now, it's it's a pretty toxic environment, and it's it's making these kids' heads filled with delusions of just, oh, I can fight my way out of anything, and we kind of see more of that going forward in the coming seasons. But, um, yeah. Uh, Vanessa Rubio as Carmen Diaz, the mother to Miguel Diaz, which doesn't play a huge part in this season, but going forward, she is a very prominent character, and I very much like her. Uh, she seems very nice. Uh, the actress is very good as her, too. Uh, Hannah Kempel as Moon. We got Annalisa Cochran as Yasmin, two kind of mean girls at the school that Samantha kind of gets intertwined with and starts hanging out with. Uh, let me see here. We have Joe Seo as Kyler Park, uh, kind of the bully to Miguel Diaz at the start of this show. Um, let me see here. Nathaniel O as Nathaniel, one of the other Cobra Kai students. We got... Uh, Brett Ernst as Louis LaRusso Jr., the cousin, I believe, to Daniel LaRusso, and also works at his uh, auto shop that he owns. Uh, we got Dam, Dam, Dam. We got Dan Hadut, Adut. Hopefully, I'm saying that right. Probably not. As Anoush, another person that works at the dealership. He is a very interesting character in this first season. Kind of fun. I don't know. Um, and then Rosa, or Rose Bianco as Grandma Rosa, the grandma to Miguel Diaz. Uh, we had Randy Heller as Lucille Lou Russo, uh, which is the original actress from the first movie. That is the mother to Dan Daniel, Ru can't freaking talk right now, Daniel LaRusso. Um, yeah, she's great. I loved seeing her again, and I believe we see her again in the next few seasons or so. I, I think she shows up more than once, so... Always good to see familiar faces like that. And last, but certainly not least, at least for the actor, not the character, is Ed Asner, Edward Asner, uh, the late, great Ed Asner, who has done so many voices for Disney, Pixar, all that sort of stuff. Um, he plays Sid Weinberg, hopefully I'm saying that right, which is the asshole stepfather of Johnny Lawrence. Um, and he plays an asshole very well, that's for sure. There's pretty much the whole main cast of the first season of Cobra Kai. Uh, a lot of great players here. Um, I say players like, you know, it's a sports team. But hey, a lot of, a lot of great actors in here. Uh, a lot of newer actors. And I think a lot of these people absolutely kill it. Some of them, you know, uh, I mean, you know, they're still kind of kids. So it's not like A++ acting. Plus with some of the writing, it's a little on the nose. And kind of like that typical writing where it's just like, I don't know, um, kind of like a Thanos line in a way. It's like, oh, destiny has arrived, or should I say I I have, or whatever. Like, it's those kinds of lines, those cheesy kind of lines, but at the same time, it works so well for the show that it's in, because even though this is like a modern show, it still kind of feels like an 80s show in a way, so just with, like, updated technology and whatnot. So, I mean, it's cheesy, but it's cheesy fun in that's what I kind of enjoy about it at most points here. But uh, let me look at some of my notes. I'm not going to go on for too much longer because I've already been talking for quite a bit. Um, but yeah, some notes here. Johnny is the prime example of why you shouldn't drink. Absolutely. Uh, lots of subtle, not so subtle nods to the films. Since I love the films, I don't mind them at all, even with the more obvious Easter eggs. Um, let me see here. I can literally quote some of these lines from the first season. All right, there's, this is the line from the first season that I absolutely love. It's hilarious, and I can say it, like, while Johnny is saying it during the show, not even with captions on or anything. He's uh, he's talking to his boss, and, uh, you know, he's dealing with kind of a Karen customer. He's like, no, 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 I didn't say she was a bitch. I said she was bitching at me. And then he pauses for a minute because the dude on the phone saying something, and he's like, you're firing me because of that bitch. And I love that line. That's just perfect for how Johnny is in this first season, at least. He starts to grow over seasons and, and become a little more respectful towards women, more respectful towards people in general. Even in this season, he has a little bit of growth, which is always important. you got to have character, de uh, character development, character growth, and a story arc for these people. Otherwise, you don't really care. And they make you care. So that's great. Um... Let me see here. I already said that earlier. Um, there's some notes that I accidentally put in here that I did not mean to. Uh, let me see here. Oh, yeah, I already talked about the wax on, wax off kind of thing. Um, yeah, I think I already said this, but 
people fail to remember, this is pro executive produced by Will Smith, which, as I said, I believe I said this in the beginning, makes a lot of sense pre-slap, or post-slap, I should say. Um, let me see here, a lot of great transitions in this show, kind of going back and forth between Johnny and Daniel, and they do really cool transitions with that. It has a lot of, a lot of spice, a lot of flavor to it, which I appreciate. Um, and then, there, this is what I'll end on. Johnny Lawrence, he might be a drunk, he might be an alcoholic, he might be a bad example for example for children, he might drive drunk, he might go to jail, he might fight kids, like literally assault minors, but at the end of the day, this is the thing that makes him not completely shitty, this is an actual line here, he's talking to Miguel about like a date or whatever, or like asking a girl on a date, and he's like, don't take no for an answer, he's like, oh, you kind of have to. He's like, well, yeah, if you're getting physical, no means no. So it shows that Johnny's not completely shitty because, I mean, look at that. I mean, at least he has some morals. Um, so, yeah, I'll end on that. Very long review for this first season, but I always have a lot to say about Cobra Kai because it is one of my favorite shows. I wish I could have found my Cobra Kai shirt, but uh, no idea where that is at the moment. Great show. And uh, if, you, if you have not watched it, I highly recommend it. It's on Netflix. All five seasons are out. And uh, if you have not watched the original Karate Kid, at least watch the original one before watching this show. And then by like season three, I would say watch the other two Karate Kid films just to know certain things, um, just to be filled in. So yeah, there you go. And if you have seen it, tell me what you think. Do you love it? Do you hate it? Are you in the middle? I love this show. So Anybody who says otherwise, I'm sorry, but I just do not agree with you. I can understand where you're coming from with certain soap opera slash cheesy moments. But uh, for me personally, being a diehard fan of that original film, there's a lot here for me. So uh, yeah, uh, leave a like on the video, subscribe, hit that notification bell so you never miss an upload. And I will be back in the next episode, most likely to review season two. So I will see you then.